Hello. Welcome to the mini go with us that we are having for the Rheumatoid Nurses Society Conference that was held in Austin in early August of 23. We are going to give you a little bit of a rundown of what we saw there, what we did there. We will talk about the booth that we had going and some of the sessions we went to. So let me clue you in on one of the sessions I went to. It was called Navigating uh, Navigating Prior Authorizations. Now, this is from a nurse's perspective. However, there are a lot of helpful tips for us because we help our nurse. We make sure they have all the information they need and we make sure we take all the tests that we need to take. And we also make sure that we're telling them what the insurance company is telling us. So let's get started. I'll run through real quick. When you're getting your prior authorizations, there are a few reasons that you might get denied for a prior authorization. You might just be too soon for your refill. So let's a lot of a lot of insurance companies they they give you a thirty day window and if you're not if you you try to get a medication twice in your thirty day window they may not give you that medication so it's important that you know what your window is and to help your doctor out by letting them know that you're still within the window when they put it in put it in the prescription and they'll be aware of that you may not have all of the tests that you need to take they may need a blood test they may need a tuberculosis test make sure that even it may seem redundant, but just ask them, hey, do I need to, do I owe you blood to get a blood test or do I owe you a TB test? Uh, do I owe you a chest x-ray? These are common questions for a rheumatologist. So do not be afraid to ask. They'll just tell you no. Or they'll, um, and then they also want to make sure that you're, you have, some of them want to make sure that you have your current vaccinations uh, for pneumonia and uh, for TB and pneumonia and such. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, pneumonia, a vaccination. Um, all right. So then, so you've gotten your vaccinations taken care of, you've gotten your blood test taken care of, you've gotten your outside of the window, so you're good to go there. All right, why is this important that you get these uh, prior authorizations taken care of? The biggest, most shocking fact I learned is that 75% of people who do not get prior authorizations approved the first time do not seek the medic the treatment. This becomes a problem, especially with autoimmune and autoinflammatory diseases, because when you do not treat those, obviously your chances of getting into remission or getting even just a little bit of uh, relief from your symptoms, it's going to take longer and it's going to lower your chance of getting results that you need. Okay, we are a patient. We're asking the right questions. We're making sure we have our tests. Else, can we do? All right. So sometimes you do get a you do have a misfire in the prior authorization. It could be for a number of reasons, like I said before. We also might be getting switched to another medication um, because biosimilar or generic has come on the market and they may not have communicated that with your doctor. They may not have communicated with you. So that might be a reason, but it's always good to read through your communications, whether it's online or in a mail in the mail, and make sure your nurses know about these things. That's the one tip that they gave me. I did ask them the one thing, what's the best tip that you can give a patient to help out with their prior authorizations is getting the information to the nurses because the nurses cannot help you if you do not tell them because uh, the, they don't get all the information as quickly as you do sometimes. Um, so you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and making sure that you're helping them out with that. All right, so the tips, the best tips I got from them, always, uh, you're the patient, you're in charge. The best tips I got were, you're allowed to call the insurance company and you're allowed to ar argue for, or just talk about your prior authorization, why you need it and what you've gone through and what you've done in, in your, from your perspective. Sometimes that's just, that's an, all that they need because they just need to make sure that A, you need the medica medication because you're having the symptoms B, that you've done the right things and taken all the tests and C, talking to a human, it's a lot harder to say no to a human. Let's, it's just the way we're built as humans. All right. You want to make sure you have, you bring everything to the doctor's attention, tell your own story, please tell your story. And it'll, I think it's not touted enough to talk about your story to people get the word out. Um, tell your story to your HR person. Let's say you work in a big company. Uh, the example they gave over there was Boeing. Uh, if you have 10, 11 people with the same kind of condition or same type of problem with their prior authorizations, they go to HR. HR is going to HR is going to try to help you out as far as the plan goes and, and try to get you in touch with the right people. So that was another tip that they gave me. 
so that's a good tip from the nurses. And the other, the last thing they talked about was uh, what they termed the blizzard. I have never heard the term the blizzard. So what it is during the winter season, usually November, when all the all the uh, insurance years are ending and beginning, and you're choosing your new insurance plans and and so forth. They need all your information. You have to make sure you give them your information because they are getting information, not just from you, but from the rest of the world in the United States, because we are doing at that point in time, we're doing the ACA healthcare. If, you, if you're getting a, from the hub, if you're getting insurance from them, or if you're getting insurance from your employer, new employers, your year plan year start. So you may switch your plan. So that might change how you have to do it. So let them know everything. Let them know you change your insurance. Let them know you have the same insurance. Let them know everything because it's first come first serve for a lot of these insurance companies with the nurses. So the faster you can give them your information, the faster they can talk to the insurance company and the faster you can get online with your medication. It has, and again, first come first serve when it comes to infusion, because that takes, a, it's, it takes a little bit longer to set up. You have to make an appointment with the fusion center and they have to ship the, the medication and the treatment to the fusion center. So these are important. So November, December, very important that you tell your doctor about any changes, address, phone numbers, anything. So let them know. But the faster you can go, the faster you might get your any problems res resolved. So that was one of the sessions that we that I went to. That was the prior authorization. So just remember, uh, be your own advocate and we will have more information coming up soon. So thank you for joining us for the mini go with us. Have a great one.